Another question? Evan, how much did they try and break up your, um, your options? Did they try that at all, or they were happy to go with each of the particular no. options? No, they didn't try and break up options, and I haven't had that experience much, to be honest. Um, uh, and because there are those three options, I don't really play a game of, um, you know, pulling things apart. It's, you know, it's option one, two or three. If you want to pay less, you take option one. If you want the best, you take option three. How, how big a difference was there between your, your option prices? Yeah. Early on, I was mucking that up because um, really, you know, option three was 10% more than option one, you know, the, and then I worked out, listening to more CDs and got another point, I think, was option three has just got to frighten them. So, <laughs> so you've just got to put a number that, you know, scares everybody. Including you. Yeah. <laughs> How are you resourcing all these new services that, you've, um, that you're now doing for the clients that, um, that have been ongoing and, and the new clients that you're doing these uh, new services for? Um, what I'm finding is that with the, um, the option three, the actual hours required aren't really that great. Um, that surprised me. You know, I delivered that 120 project really with about... 10, 12 contact hours in front of the client. Um, I thought it would be a lot more. But um, so, you know, the, the resourcing perhaps is, um, to me, not such an issue. But understand too that um, in running my accounting business, uh, the compliance side of my business is very efficient, it's really tight, and we do have spare capacity as a result. Um, so I, I haven't really found resourcing it that much of a problem. Um, so, so Rob and the coaching club has probably gotten you extra capacity, saved you some time, now you're applying that time to, to good use. To, yeah, to, yeah. 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 Uh, I was talking to Evan last night, thanks for your time last night, Evan, and um, I thought I'd put into practice what we learnt yesterday from Michael Sheargold along the lines of, if it's possible for you, it's possible for me, it's just a question of how. And, um, We've probably had mixed success, I suppose, with our um, project proposals. Uh, the first thing I'd like to just say is don't at all feel um, that you need to be apologetic for the amount of time you're putting up, up front with regards to that. I think that's probably one thing that we're not doing properly. And the other thing that um, I learned from Evan last night was he tended to follow Alan's um, nine steps, is it, Evan? Uh, a lot more in depth than what we do, and I think that's probably the two things that we're not doing properly. More a comment than anything, but if there's time, it, it would be good value for anyone around here who hasn't had the same level of success that Evans had to go back and have a look at those nine steps. We'll do that. Thank you. We'll do That'll that. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, how do you record your time? Do you use charge-out rates, or do you go to dollar an hour? We use charge-out rates as a measure of um, understanding where we're at with the project, um, but we don't use them at all as a um, methodology to bill. In fact, our engagement letter does not talk about charge-out rates. Um, it just it simply says that you will be given a price for every job before you start. Anybody else? There's one here and one... Evan Adam here. Um, just could you walk me through just a, a, what we sort of term a basic compliance client and how you would give them a proposal on that basis as opposed to a sort of a special one-off project? Yep. Um, our, say, our compliance work is just done with a um, really short email. Um, it has a few bullet points about um, this is the work that we're going to do to you, this is the value that you know, a compliance job might have. And um, here's the price. This is when we'll do it. Um, pay up front, 5% discount, 50 now, 50 in 30 days. OK. Uh, um, so when they accept, we start. If they don't accept, we don't start. So do you give them three options for your no, compliance? No, I haven't been able to work them out. Right. Um, so I don't try. OK. 
Thank you. So that would be like the left-hand column. I have yep. the must compliance. Yep. Yeah. No options. Take it or leave it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? So I just have a couple more questions. Uh, what was the most important thing to you uh, to really change what was up here? I mean, was it the fact that you had had such a hard time and, you, I mean, as you said, that was the fear that was there? Or was there something else that said to you, bang, this is the right way to go? And, you know, now, now I see the light now. It probably started when I looked at the DVD that Rob put out that talked about pricing up front. You know, and when I just saw what a time-based billing arrears is just a shocking model. It's just terrible, <laughs> you know. Um, and this one just seems so much uh, better. And it also, you know, what really resonated with me was, um, as a businessman, how can I go to a client and not tell them what it's going to cost them to get something done? And I realised that, you know, that's that's not who I am as a person, you know, and I'm just followed, you know, what I'd been taught, and um, it was wrong. So you let your, who you were determine how you'd act in business? No question. Yeah, so you didn't try to have a business life and a personal life. This is who I am and my business has to match it. Absolutely, no question, yeah. So the gentleman uh, in the middle over here made a very good point before, and he said, well, you know, we've got to be confident but not arrogant, he said. Yep. And you seem like a, a very, very modest guy. I mean, you, you don't strike me as arrogant at all. But you said you're very confident when you're talking to these people. Is, is that a line that you find hard to deal with? or? No. Um, um, I love small business. You love I, what you do. Yeah, yeah. I love my clients. Love your clients. Um, I understand that they don't know their numbers. And what comes really easy to me comes really hard to them. Um, uh, and I guess, you know, that passion and determination got married up with the mechanism to go to articulate that and get paid really well. You always smile when you say that. Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, uh, you know, when you come from a position of, uh, you know, a lot of debt, um, you're meant to be an accountant advising clients and you don't really have a lot of assets yourself. Um, you know, there's an issue of feeling a bit like a fraud in that sense. Mm. Um, so, you know, perhaps that answers that fellow's question about, you know, coming to Hawaii. Um, uh, I feel I have an obligation to make money and have cash flow and be a really well-performing business if I'm going to be any good to my client. So your obligation is to be good? Yes. Yeah. You and I were both sacked. It's not so bad, is it? No. <laughs> yeah. Let's hear it forever. Thank you. Thank you.